The empire that had taken up the fight again was awaiting its commander. On an airfield near Algiers, welcomed by the High Commissioner in Africa, General de Gaulle steps out onto French soil. The community of ideals forged by the successes in Tunisia will gain in strength and all energy will be directed towards one sole aim, combat. In the ports of Morocco and Algeria, equipment arrives continuously. Cases from America are filled with arms for us, from reconnaissance vehicles to tanks. 25,000 vehicles will come from factories in 1943. From planes, in particular the fighter bombers, to jeeps, which give substance to the new army's formula, numbers and power. In the small towns, alongside the peaceful market activities, workshops for assembly and repair have appeared. And there, beside the soldiers, companies of workers and sailors, civilian men and women take part in the common cause. Faced with such a sight, the young women have not remained content to gaze out of their windows. They have left to join the units where they will become nurses, radio operators or drivers, all brave helpers of the fighting men. It is here at Cherchel that combatants, or at least their army chiefs, are trained. They are not simply repeating the previous war, but preparing enthusiastically for the war of liberation. The same enthusiasm can be found in the native officer training centers of Morocco and Algeria, where the sons of leading citizens, like their fathers before them, come to place themselves at the service of France. Their keen horsemanship keeps up the noblest traditions for the benefit of the modern army. But the essential aim of the preparations of this army is to gain a foothold on the continent. The first means is the parachute. Training followed by the trainee parachutist will make him a specialized combatant, ready for any mission. Everywhere in Africa, and by any means, the French are making preparations. The French are fighting. The elite units are already awaiting future campaigns. One initial audacious mission was the liberation of Corsica. The death's head of the Corsairs surrounded by seven daggers. This is the pennant of the French submarine Casabianca, which carried out seven missions in Corsica when it was occupied by the enemy. After leaving North Africa, it brought arms, orders and soldiers to the freedom fighters of the Marquis. Thanks to this vessel and its crew, the Corsican patriots remained in contact with their liberators throughout the months of preparation. On the 13th of September 1943, they arrive. French boats transport the advance parties of the French Army of Africa, which attempt a surprise operation on the island. On the 14th, our troops land in Ajaccio. They immediately set off in pursuit of the Germans. On the 24th, we occupy Bonifacio, and we arrive in Bastia, the last center of enemy resistance, on the 5th of October. Ajaccio. For four days, the actions of the Patriots and our shock troops have kept the enemy out of the town. Our destroyers can dock. From the colonel to the humblest Algerian horseman, every man prepares himself. And progress begins in a countryside where the men of the Maquis have made their presence felt. Obstacles make progress difficult, 
so they are removed. Planes machine gun the reconnaissance contingents. They are brought down. Among the victims is a man with his knee smashed in. There is not a murmur from him. The tanks have caught up with us, and from this moment, they are going to back up our infantrymen during their advance. Here is their handiwork, bodies, the evidence of a short engagement and a rapid retreat. In the extreme north, near Tagim, we occupy the enemy observation posts. It is our turn to keep watch. Bastia is nearby. On the following day, on the 5th of October at 6 in the morning, the first French contingents enter a town abandoned by the marauders. What sight will meet the eyes of the Corsicans when they return to their homes? A devastated harbour corpses and ruins. However, tomorrow they will again see their villages, their towns, where from now on only the French flag will fly, hoisted like this one by one of their brothers in arms. December 1943. The moment has come. The French will confront the enemy on equal terms. At Bizerte and at Oran, an expeditionary force embarks. Goodbye, Africa. Tomorrow, the great news will be broken. The French army is leaving for Italy. From now on, it is in Europe, in Europe at last, that the French soldiers will fight. On the 1st of December, the troops land at Naples, already conquered by the Allies. They take up their positions in the most mountainous part of the Abruzzi Mountains, where they will fight throughout the winter. During the landing at Anzio, their push towards San Alia will play a decisive role. The landing at Naples is complicated by the destruction of the port. At times, landing bridges are used to step over the masts of the sunken ships. At other times, it is the barges that ensure transport between the ships and the quays. The French soldiers who step onto Italian soil today are repaying the stab in the back by the fascists in June 1940. They thought they had overthrown us, but we return as victors. They thought that they had reduced us to slavery. We return as liberators. The equipment is unloaded at Bagnoli, a small port near Naples that had remained intact. Our armour pushes forward. They cross villages where the recent battle has destroyed all traces of their peaceful past. It is raining. On a bridge constantly ripped away by turbulent waters and then rebuilt, our units cross the Volturno, famous for the determined resistance to the Allies by the Germans that occupied its banks. The sector assigned to the French Expeditionary Corps begins where the roads that can be used by cars end. From now on, Mountain tracks have to be used where another foe awaits us, mud.
Further on, higher up, in the midst of mountains inaccessible to cars, the North African pack animals take their place in the combat again, just as they take their names again, the mules. The royal mule force, says a soldier, smiling, because here the mule is king. Here, machines do not play a decisive part in combats. Only the infantrymen have their place here. The French sector, which resembles the hostile mountain terrain of North Africa, is where the infantry is at home. On these peaks, in these valleys, there is no spectacular combat, but a tough, stubborn struggle. This barren soil demands of all those who cling to it a perfect use of the terrain, a constant courage and vigilance, and also imposes on all an obsession with the presence of the enemy. And one day the enemy shows his face at Serezzolo, which has just fallen into our hands on Christmas Eve. Christmas. A few simple joys remind these men of goodwill that this is a day of celebration. Christmas. A village only 200 meters from the line of fire. A chaplain. Some men keep vigil. Others pray.